talking. I just want to talk a moment about discerning between the truth and distortion or non-truth or less than truth. <laughs> because sometimes there can be shades of truth, right? You can have, you know, you can be listening to something and you can be like, yeah, that's true, that's true. And then like one gets slipped past you, right? Because, you know, people can be telling what they think is true. It's not that people are necessarily trying to lie to you, but they're not really telling you the whole truth. So, the real truth of who you are and this universe and this wonderful thing we call life is absolutely perfect. What? It doesn't seem very perfect. <laughs> because if we think about it, you know, we've learned that our beliefs create our reality and that what you think about, you bring about. And it's just really our beliefs and our thinking that are creating our experience. So, yes, our experience is less than perfect. There's still war. There's still scarcity. There's still illness. And those things are real, but they're not ultimate truth because they don't have to be real. They're real because of all of our limiting beliefs that are creating an experience of war, scarcity, and illness. If we were actually able to clear out all of those limiting beliefs on every level of our being, we wouldn't experience them anymore. And then we could live an experience of ultimate truth, of perfection, everywhere, now. So, how do we experience this and align, you know, our reality with truth, okay? So, we talked about in one video how to make that connection with your Christ self, that part of you that resides in Christ consciousness, which is pure oneness, pure love, pure peace, bliss. And at that level of reality, on that plane of existence, everything absolutely is perfect, as it should be, as we were designed to be. But because that we live in this, you know, matrix reality, this illusory reality, um, all of that perfection, all of that information, that pure truth comes through so many filters, so many layers of limiting beliefs. Now, these are not just our personal limiting beliefs. It's not like it's all your fault that you're experiencing life this way because many things happen to us as children. We certainly didn't cause that personally. But we live in a world of collective unconscious limiting beliefs. We, it's coming through our DNA and our, you know, it's being passed down to us um, from a hereditary standpoint. It's coming to us maybe from past lives. It's coming to us as a cultural limiting belief, as a national limiting belief, as, you know, we have to fight the bad guys. We have a, have a war on terror, a war on drugs. Um, so all of these things are infringing on us, on our consciousness. And so we have this, this pure truth that's added, and all this negativity is added to it on all these different levels. And that's what produces our experience of something that's very, uh, very far removed from perfection. Nevertheless, if we can find a way to clear all of those limiting beliefs on all of those levels, we can create an experience of perfection, which is our divine birthright as human beings. But obviously the job is not just a personal one. I can't just clear, you know, it, it's a daunting task to try to clear my personal limiting beliefs from childhood, <laughs> all the stuff that I picked up along the way and all the things that were told and done to me that have created my personal reality, that's really, really challenging in and of itself because we've really got to go into the subconscious mind in order to clear that stuff. We can't just analyze it, understand it, diagnose it, think about it with the conscious mind. That still doesn't actually change it. We have to actually go into the subconscious mind, whether with NLP, hypnosis, or some type of energy work, and change those pictures, movies, conversations, emotions, that are creating our personal reality of limitation. But once we've done that, we're still affected by the hereditary, we're still affected by past life, we're still affected by the collective, all the stuff around us. So that's where, you know, I think the gift of Ho'oponopono comes in because if we see it in our experience, 
even if it's not us, it's not our family, but if it's in our awareness, we get to take responsibility for that. Because it's not until we clear all of it that we're going to actually be able to have heaven on earth or have a perfect experience. So we're all part of this game. We're all in this together. We all get to clear it for everybody because unless and until we do, we're not going to experience life the way that we're meant to, the way we deserve. That's our divine birthright as humans to live heaven on earth in perfection, love, peace, joy, and true self-expression that's completely uninhibited. So, you know, a great way to, to at least be able to tap in and have a vision of that perfection is through meditation. Because when you go through meditation, not only are you going into the subconscious mind, you're able to open that portal into those higher realms, connect to your higher self, your Christ self. And you can get a glimpse, a feeling, a love feeling perhaps, um, information about the beauty and, and that your life can be and that you can create for yourself. And you can get, you can tap into that information and that wealth of knowledge and pure love and peace that we can't really access on our on a normal life. We are able to tap into and access that in meditation, but then when we come back down into our physical day, everyday life, we kind of re-enter that soup of limitation, limiting beliefs, and that becomes our experience once again. The more and more that we're able to clear out those limitations, the more we're able to keep that connection and actually live in that space of perfection, love, peace, oneness. But it takes diligence. It takes commitment to every time something comes up in you to feel challenged, to feel hurt, to feel angry, to feel whatever, to make that commitment, I'm going to clear this now. You know, there's many tools. There's tapping. There's emotional freedom, you know, emotion code. Um, there's you know, the art of awakening through wonder where you just sit with it and you begin to introduce love and, and wonder and gratitude into the emotion. And you begin to really clear these things in whatever way you can. And as you do, that connection begins to really stream and you can live in that space of joy and peace on a moment by moment basis, really being present in each moment, not letting yourself be pulled to the left or the right to be, um, to react to all of these negative limiting beliefs that are all around us. So um, I ask for your help <laughs> in clearing it, not only for yourself, because that takes most courage just to look at your own stuff and actually do the work of clearing it, um, but then to also take on the challenge of clearing it on that bigger level for all of us so that we can actually break through this matrix reality. We can shatter this reality paradigm and once again integrate into and experience and live this amazing divine perfection of joy, peace, connection, love, everything that we could have, should have, deserve to have because it is our divine birthright. So the truth is perfection Anything that's not perfection is not really true. It might be real, it might be a fact on 3D reality, but it's not ultimate truth and it's not what we're limited to once we can clear all the limiting beliefs that are creating a very different experience. So, If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me or text me because I know this is a pretty big concept, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, but it's hopeful. It's very hopeful because we can turn this whole thing around. We just have to type into our tap into our divine power to do so. And together we can. Yay. Namaste.